Hi, I'm John. As a journalist reporting on the HIV AIDS epidemic for the past three decades, and as a person living with HIV myself for the past decade, I'm very aware of the resilience in the gay community. I'm also aware of the statistics that show high rates of HIV infection, depression, and substance abuse among gay men. But I don't see gay men, and I don't see myself as statistics. Instead, I see us as survivors of homophobia, of oppression, of things that can drive anyone to behave in ways that are less than healthy. When I interviewed him in 2013 for an article on gay men's resilience that I wrote for The Atlantic, Dr. Ron Stahl, the director of the University of Pittsburgh's Center for LGBT Health Research, told me that resilience is an untapped resource. He said that tapping our resilience is the key to avoiding HIV, bolstering our health, and strengthening our community. Sacred Ben will be the first commercial book to document the incredible resilience in gay men, weaving together new research with the inspiring stories of individual gay men, including my own story. I'll show how resilience matters for our health, for our LGBT community, and for American society. The 300-page narrative book will engage readers' minds and hearts to show that it's not only possible to thrive in spite of homophobia, but that so many of us already are doing it, and others can, you can too. Young gay men will find pride and encouragement in the book. Older gay men will find their stories validated and valued as I encourage them to remain engaged in the community as mentors, elders, and role models. Parents, teachers, pastors, and counselors will learn how they can assist gay boys to become healthy gay men. College professors and their students will find a showcase of research that is so new it hasn't been documented yet in a book. It's only been in specialized journals. Sacred Band also will become a valuable resource for HIV educators and policymakers, offering in one volume the most up-to-date thinking about how best to engage young men and not-so-young men in protecting their health and avoiding HIV using what are called strength-based or resilience-based interventions. In the book, I'll examine the connections between resilience and our physical and mental health. I'll look at how many gay men find resilience in religion, spirituality, and mental health care that supports them as gay men, rather than requiring them to change before addressing their actual needs. I'll show how far we've come since the days of being timid friends of Dorothy to being the bold citizens of today, demanding to be recognized as equal citizens and human beings. I'll show why a supportive family needs to understand their role in building their gay son's resilience. I'll look at the huge role that friends and friendship play in supporting our resilience and in our build, building our community. I'll look at the issue of boundaries in our public and private lives, who we are in our workplaces versus who we are in our off time. In a chapter that I'm especially excited about, I'll look at gay men who find resilience in other sources of identity beyond their sexual orientation, including gay men of color and men who live with physical disabilities. And I'll wrap up the book by looking ahead at what our lives and community can look like when we embrace ourselves and one another at every age and claim our heroic legacy for ourselves. Yeah, Narrative okay. nonfiction requires in-depth face-to-face interviews and observation. That means traveling to several cities to do face-to-face -face interviews and observe firsthand the model programs that are showing how to apply research about gay men's resilience in the real world. Unfortunately, as an independent journalist and writer, I don't have a news organization or university paying me a salary while I write a book. My publisher, Roman and Littlefield, is giving me a $2,000 advance. Only half of it is paid up front. My literary agent who got me the book contract will take 15%. That means I will have just over $100 a month for the short eight months the publisher is giving me to report and write the book. 
it's not enough to do this book the right way. I've researched potential foundation support, but their funding cycles won't work with the book's tight turnaround time. So I need to raise funds to cover the costs of developing Sacred Band, including the reporting trips, shipping, supplies, building a website, and some research assistance. I'm turning to you, my colleagues and friends, because I believe you will understand why I look at Sacred Band as far more than just my own next book. I think you'll know why I think of it as our book, and just the right book for our time, our moment of equality. You've put your finger on a subject that people need to desperately know about, says Dr. Caitlin Ryan, the founder and director of the Family Acceptance Project based at San Francisco State University, one of the model programs I'll profile in the book. Eugene Robinson, the first openly gay bishop of the Episcopal Church, calls Sacred Band timely and of the moment. I've chosen rewards for donating to my crowdfunding campaign that will further the mission of the book, reporting on and building gay men's resilience. I hope you'll become one of the financial patrons of this book project. Your support will enable me to bring a message of hope, backed by science, in a book that will be bold, compassionate, well-informed, wise, and precisely right for this moment, our moment of equality. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your kind consideration.